Hello and welcome to another A1 video. What if you were the last person on earth, assuming you're really not looking for what someone would do tomorrow? You're simply highlighting the fact that it's due to happen. That being the case, you'd be wondering how I would spend my last hours on this planet with everyone else? I suppose that would all really just depend upon how everyone else was going to die. I say that because I don't really know how this crazy scenario would work out. Let's look at said scenarios, shall we? Pure coincidence the idea of all these apocalyptic scenarios played out is to assume that everything else fails to survive it, but there is always that impossibly small chance someone could survive, meteor impact they say, that the meteor impact will destroy everything, including bacteria, but somehow I'm going to survive to see it happen. Well, we can safely assume that the grounds will mostly be corpse-ridden, scarred desert land with shrapnel and storm clouds scattering everywhere for the most part. It would take longer than my lifetime to fix, so I'd probably die before I got anything worthwhile from it all. Nuclear fallout nuclear radiation causes horrific side effects on both nature and humanity. Now, since we're talking about the rest of humanity being destroyed, it's safe to assume that the wildlife is still ongoing, meaning a lot of creatures and plants are going to become toxic and or more dangerous. I probably wouldn't survive much longer than anyone else after that. The rapture well, here's the controversial topic. The idea that the rapture comes and takes away all the believers in God and Jesus. The rest of us are set into a world where the devil rules for seven years before the earth is destroyed, I assume it will be destroyed. I don't know the entire thing 100% yet. Either way, what we're suggesting is that all mankind is gone, meaning this is the end of the seven years of Satan's rule, and now the earth is gone. I suppose I'm left wondering, how? Personal hell yep, should have seen this one coming straight afterwards. The idea that I'm the only person left on the planet is potentially a personal hell. An afterlife of loneliness, where I have nothing but the world to keep me company, driven mad by my isolation and loneliness until my spirit dries up, and I'm left a crazy wreck screaming out loud constantly, tasty. Viral infection yep, the Z word comes to mind, but I'm just talking about any kind of biological strain that, somehow, I'm not capable of being affected by. Then we could say that all of humanity has died out because a zombie isn't technically considered human anymore, is it? So, yep, a lifetime of running from the billions zombie horde for me, cheery stuff. Pop the idea that this hypothetical scenario has never really been contemplated enough to carry a justifiable reason for itself, thus we are left with the inconclusive deus ex machina which amounts to it just happened, at that point, yeah, everyone else's scenarios play out pretty well to how they want it to happen. Humanity just pops out of existence, and you're the only one left alone on the planet. But regardless of the reasons behind why it actually happened, how would I spend my time before the world was going to come together? Personally, I'd get everyone who knows me to take the time out to hear me tell them about my deepest and darkest secrets. Get them to hear me out and understand where I'm coming from. Not to make anyone feel bad or egotistical or whatnot, but just to get a weight off my chest. If I'm going to spend the rest of my life completely alone, I don't want to do it still spending my time wishing I could have simply apologized for it all. I'd rather live a lonely but guilt-free life than a lonely but guilt-ridden one. As for afterwards? Fulfill my wish to travel the world. I'd grab a few bits and bobs here and there, get information pertaining to all the sections of the world, get some exercise going on, then head out into the world and learn to live off the land as I went. Once I traveled the planet once, I'd stop off at home to build a small home for myself, populate it with all the goods I'd gained over time, and then probably do the whole suicide cliché of making a last video documenting myself and how things came about, then just inject myself and sit back waiting for the lights to disappear. Sound sad? Of course it does. We're talking about the end of all mankind here. But at least I'd want a clean end after everything else. Wash my hands of my own incompetencies, irresponsibilities, guilt, and hate. Learn about the world from the ground it is on, then leave a small presentation in my own hand built home. A peaceful way to go, I think. A and why sensible human will, but all the things food items, hospitals, shops, laboratories, vehicles, etc. are present. So the most important thing would be to create another human being. This will ensure the survival of human species. Would go to places where donated eggs are kept and will try to create several babies in the laboratory. At least one of them would survive, right? We'll try to reverse any damage that has been done to the environment due to humans. I will destroy all machines that cause pollution etc. And I will give good advice to the babies that I had created. 
they should have a holistic and ecological view of the environment. Would create new rules for the new society. I will write a constitution. I will start from scratch. I would ensure that the children of the new generation are atheists. They should not be superstitious. Would do what I want. I would fly aeroplanes, spaceships, etc. Everything on the earth would mine even the costliest things on the earth. It would be a wonderful life. For others it would be like to wake up and find oneself the only human alive, marooned in a modern world in which everyone else has disappeared or been killed by some mysterious virus, is both the stuff of nightmares and a fantasy. For this would be a tainted paradise, a world in which you could do anything you wanted. You would be a god, a king, but your kingdom would be empty. Those of a more rugged individualist bent would, one suspects, relish the challenge of remaking the world in their own image. But what is the reality? How long would the average person survive if they woke up to find themselves the only human being left on the planet? After coming to terms with the shock and the grief, the loss of loved ones, and the sheer bewilderment of it all, how quickly would 21st century man, whose practical skills extend no further than wiring a plug and putting up some shelves, be able to adapt to a world where he was responsible for every aspect of his survival? Survival experts have a priority of necessities. At the top are water, food and shelter the shelter, in a world full of empty buildings, would be no problem. But what about sustenance? A man can survive six weeks without food, but only six days without water. With everyone gone, no electricity and no maintenance, the pumping stations and treatment works that supply water to the taps would soon stop working. There would be a large amount of fresh water stored in domestic tanks, but this would go stale quite rapidly. In fact, our survivor would have to rely on that symbol of modern decadence, bottled water. If he or she broke into a large supermarket, they might find several thousand liters of the stuff purified, sealed in handy storage containers, in the warehouse out the back. Fortunately, supermarkets also contain a great deal of preserved food. Most tinned meats and vegetables have sell-by dates a couple of years hence, but the reality is that you could probably live off it quite safely for decades. A couple of years ago, Manchester couple Les and Beryl Lyley celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary with a tin of chicken they had been given as a present. In 1956, it was fine. So, food and drink would not be a problem, although fresh food would be off the menu after a few days, unless our survivor could grow and gather crops and fish or hunt, which would be problematic for most of us. Fishing rods are easy to come by, but how quickly could you lay your hands on a rifle or shotgun, for instance? And as weeks turn into months, and months into years, there would be other problems. It would be a good idea to get out of the cities, for example. In the book The World Without Us, published last year, author Alan Weissman speculated what would happen if Earth's most invasive species, us, was suddenly wiped out. It wouldn't take long, he pointed out, for the works of man to start crumbling. Of course, some of our buildings would last a great length of time. After all, our world is littered with thousand-year-old edifices, and there are even a few twice that age in regular use, probably the most complete being the Pantheon in Rome. But few of our structures have been built to Roman standards. Without regular maintenance and subject to the ravages of rain, frost and heat, most of Britain's often shoddy housing stock would start to crumble and become dangerous within a decade or so. Roofs would lose their tiles, eaves would lift, and walls would absorb moisture, woodwork would rot, and everywhere vegetation would push its way through concrete and asphalt. In the long term, our survivor would have to choose a solid, stone building dating back a century or more. There would be another, everpersen threat to our solitary urbanite. Fire. One lightning strike could set off a city-wide conflagration, with no fire brigade to put it out. The countryside would not be without its hazards, either. Food, paradoxically, would be far harder to obtain, and forays into the crumbling cities and towns would be needed to replenish supplies. Some areas of rural Britain would be worth avoiding, not least because a potent threat to our survivor would come from Britain's two dozen or so remaining nuclear reactors, mostly dotted around the northern and eastern coasts. If their staff vanished and as backup power supplies failed, a real danger would be that one or more would go into meltdown as cooling pumps failed. The equivalent of several Chernobyls could render big areas of the country uninhabitable. With prevailing winds as they are, it would perhaps be best to head for the westernmost parts of the country, or even try to escape Britain altogether. Assuming our survivor avoided this radiation fallout, hygiene would be an issue if he chose to remain in the city, he would find the lack of main sewage and drainage, a problem after only a few days, as the pumping stations failed, while rivers would probably be too polluted to bathe in. 
The only hot water would come from a stove, and washing oneself and one's clothes would be a chore, fortunately the world's shops are full of many, many lifetimes worth of clean clothing. As for our survivor's health, the lack of any other people to spread infectious diseases would be a blessing, but the risk of accidents would be a constant worry even a broken limb could quickly prove fatal if the injury was not dealt with correctly. What about transport? With no regular maintenance, most cars would last only a few years before they give up the ghost. Obtaining fuel would, first, be a matter of siphoning from the tanks of abandoned vehicles, then breaking into filling stations, unscrewing the fronts of the petrol pumps, and drawing up fuel from the underground tanks manually. But while the roads would be mercifully free of traffic jams, after a decade most of them would become horribly overgrown with weeds. After 20 years, many would be impassable except in the most rugged four-wheel drive vehicles. After 50, trees would be growing through the motorways. Fortunately, civilization would have equipped our survivor with the ultimate instruction manual, the combined wisdom of the millions of books contained within the world's libraries, with no one to run the servers and no electricity, the internet would shut down almost immediately, although individual computers could perhaps be kept going indefinitely, using some sort of solar power generator. How to mend a broken car and how to mend a broken arm, how to hunt, how to sail a boat dot 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 it's all there in black and white. Yes, life would be hard and sometimes brutish, but written help would be on tap. Provided he kept his wits about him, was of a reasonably practical bent and was lucky enough to stay healthy, our survivor could enjoy many years of relative comfort, even luxury. There would certainly be some pleasures to keep him or her occupied. But it would be interesting to see how quickly nature regains the upper hand. How long, for example, before escapees from the zoos made themselves a new home in the wild, how long before the forests began their march into the cities? What would happen to all the domestic animals? Would packs of feral dogs become a threat, or would man's best friend remain on good terms with the only representative of our species? Interestingly, there is one place on earth that offers a clue as to the likely wilderness our survivor would inhabit. The one previously inhabited area that has been abandoned by humanity is that surrounding the Chernobyl nuclear plant, which has been empty for nearly 22 years. Amazingly, nearby cities have become havens for wildlife, the empty streets echoing to the sounds of howling wolves and a hundred species of songbirds. The radiation which chased man away has been kind to nature. For the surviving human, there would certainly be fun to be had with the remains of our civilization. An enterprising last man could raid the museums and galleries to build a temple to human achievement, containing the finest works of art. He could decorate his home with Picassos and Da Vinci's, fill his garden with rodents and Michelangelo's. He could drive any car, wear the best designer clothes. But in the years to come, these pleasures would surely pale, and our survivor would face a far bigger threat than starvation, thirst, radiation, or even disease. For as years turned to decades, our survivor would discover the grim truth that humans did not evolve to be solitary. We are tribal, pack animals. Our survivor would probably swap all the treasures of the world for a single companion. It is intriguing and makes a good movie to contemplate being the last survivor. What fun one could have. In reality, once the practicalities had been dealt with, he or she would almost certainly descend into madness. I another perspective. Why is everyone worried about food? Stores are filled with canned food and other long life stuff that takes ages to expire. If you are the only one to eat they will provide you with years or even possibly decades of sustaining, if boring, meals, which is more than enough to learn how to grow your own food. First thing, I would be extremely surprised and quite scared. First thing I would do is try to get an understanding of the event. Is everyone everywhere really gone? Are there people out of my block? Are there crashed cars from disappeared drivers in the street? What's on TV? On the radio? In cities? In other countries? I would try to call people on the phone too, first my family in France, then people I know in other countries, then random people everywhere on earth. Wasi in a specific situation when it happened that would explain why I am the only person remaining. Are there people in similar situations that would maybe have not disappeared once I would have established I am really on my own for some time, my first concern would be for my personal safety. I am in London. It is a modern city I don't see what kind of major catastrophe would happen quickly, modern industrial systems are designed to automatically shut down at some point if nobody monitors them, but plenty of minor ones would. Surely dozens of people have put a kettle on the fire and then disappeared, and since the firefighters have disappeared too that's doomed to end up badly. Crashed cars, trains and planes would make a mess too. 
I would quickly retreat at least to my place in the suburbs and maybe to an even less densely populated area, using a bike to move quickly and not to be bothered by stopped cars for a few days and wait for everything that's bound to quickly fail, burn, explode or misfunction without human supervision to do so before going back. I would try to keep my mind pragmatically busy and not to get too depressed by the idea that all the persons I care for have probably disappeared. Too. Then I would try to make plans. The first thing is survival. As I said food is not likely to be a problem anytime soon, I would just loot a few shops, get some fresh food as there still is, and stock up on long shelf life stuff. More seriously, the city commodities won't last long without human attention. I would stock up on bottled water until I can find a reliable way to purify river water, filtering and boiling, it should be enough in principle, but I don't want to take risks with no doctors around. The electric grid won't last long either, and one of the first thing I would do is look for an engine generator and a good supply of fuel until I can make more long-term plans. The internet and the wealth of knowledge on it would fail even quicker, and that would be very depressing to me, but there is really nothing I could do about that. The main immediate dangers I could see would be failing technology, and more generally getting in a situation that is usually harmless but becomes deadly when you are the only one around, for x. Locking yourself into a broken elevator. Getting crazy, panicked or suicidal from isolation getting badly sick or injured and having nobody to heal minimals would eventually become a danger too he would take the following actions to solve them super careful at all time until I can figure how the world with only me inside works. Wear protective clothing, get survival gear, and be watchful of everything odd. Also remain physically fit. Loot a library or two and get books about the psychological effect of isolation and how to remain sane when you are alone. I would look up books by people who survived on a desert island, for example, and the research work of the NASA and other space agencies towards space exploration. Of course I would also get books on survival and other practical topics. Stock up on meds and medical instruments. Read books on first aid, medicine, etc. to have an idea of how to treat anything serious that would happen to me. Get some guns, some ammunition, some serious books on how to maintain them and use them safely, and practice. Eventually, go hunting to get both meat and more practice. With the basics taken care of, when I am quite sure I will not die or become totally crazy in the short term, I will probably strive to go back to Paris, in France. That's where I am from, that's where my family, my love, and many of the people I care for LIVED, and even if they have most likely disappeared too, the desire to travel to their place would probably become too strong to safely ignore. Plus it would be a goal, and goals is probably something you need badly, when everything that used to give meaning to your life has vanished. I would take a car and drive towards Folkestone. I would take some gear with me but take my time, be careful avoiding stopped and crashed cars on the road. Once there, I would consider walking in the channel, doing it would take one or two days. If it looks damaged by a crashed Eurostar? Or if I have doubt I can do it for some reason, maybe walking in the dark for two days is just too scary. I would get to the coast and take the alternate option of getting a boat, I have some knowledge of boats and navigation, although I have never done that kind of trip alone. I would read books and stock hardware until I feel confident making the crossing on a day with a good weather. Once in France I would take a car and drive to Paris, the northern highway is usually deserted, there should not be many crashed cars, and it shouldn't be difficult. Once there, I would go to my girlfriend and my family's place. I would try to understand where they were and what they were doing when they disappeared and do some sort of memorial action, I don't know which one. But I would certainly need it. Then I think my focus would be towards locating other survivors in the world. I would get sophisticated radio spectrum analysis equipment and see if anyone is on air. Then I would get my hands on the most powerful radio emitter I can find, put it into shape and connect it to a generator, I am an electrical engineer, and although that's not my specific field, I'm quite confident I could do it with enough time, study and effort, and send messages asking people to answer if they can, and or to come to Paris France, in many language. If nobody answers, I would probably set my mind of traveling. Maybe there is someone around who hasn't the skills, mincet or equipment to receive and answer my messages, and if there is really nobody around, I can't see anything better to do than to admire the natural wonders of the world and the ruins of civilization. I would set my radio transmitter to emit the same pre-recorded message for as long as the fuel runs, leave a note to people who would come there so they can use the station to answer me while I'm away, and I would go. I would do plenty of prior research and focus first on places with not too many dangerous animals and decent climate conditions. I would also stay clear of old conflict zones potentially full of landmines. 
If I can't find anyone, I don't know what I would do. Maybe go on traveling and seeing new things until I am too old and settle at some place. Maybe I would eventually die by accident one way or another. Probably I will want to leave a record on some long-lasting support, saying that as far as I know I was the last human and telling my story. It would, quite literally, be hell on earth. Thank you for watching please don't forget to like share subscribe the video.